Hi everyone, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Well, Jim, uh, the second half of the Labor Day Classic uh, Home at Home happened this week. In fact, it was four days after the uh, the Labor Day Classic Friday uh, when the Edmonton Eskimos played the Calgary uh, Stampeders. Again, a nail-biter right to the end, but you say you were surprised that the Eskimos were even in it. Somehow they managed to hang around. I don't know what happened both weeks here. The, they don't, they're not generating enough in the air for me. They're, the, the passing game's leaving a lot to be... Uh, you know, I, I guess, too, that... They've got Kerry Joseph in. Stephen Giles is hurt. Stephen Giles was trying to, you know, get his identity going and get get this offense rolling. But now, now we're kind of we're. I don't know. Do you, is it is it one and one a or I mean, yeah. Kerry Joseph's the backup, but he he did he did some good things. But once again, it came down to the very last kick of the ball, and once again we missed. Not this one was not. closer though. Yeah, which it was is hit good. Post. Yeah. Sometimes you get the lucky bounce and it and it flies in, but not on this night. Sounds like Jim Cordish had two good games going back to back for the Stampeders, eating us alive. So I mean, yeah, nice to. I mean, if we could get a handle on him, but I mean, we had three great. You're saying we got three great corners right now, and just can't get enough touches on for them, eh? Yeah, that seems to be the case. I mean, they're they're trying to figure out what to do with these three great running backs, and you know, I'm sure lots of people would love to have a spoil of riches, oh, but totally. uh, you know, it it brings its own problems, and when they figure that out, it'll maybe help. It'll help you know generate a bit of a bit more offense but they they need to get they need to get thrown the ball they need to they need to march up that field and but they're just not doing it right now absolutely well let's give a quick look at the to the pending lockout in the nhl the cba expires next weekend probably before we're going to get another show out do you think by next the next show jim we're going to have hockey or not i'm going to say no absolutely uh it sounds like the two sides will be talking a little bit they'll They'll be trying to bridge that gap, but we all know what the gap is, and I don't think it's going to take a lot to bridge it because unless the players take a rolled back salary, it's not happening. No. And uh, I, I think we've we've uh, decided on 15 minutes of fame. The NHL doesn't really isn't really bothered about locking out the players, so mm. that's going to happen no matter what. They're not worried about. They're like, oh, I hope there's not a lockout. They're like, they can't wait to close that door. Absolutely. So I think we'll be talking next time about what it'll take for for a deal to happen but i i just don't see it anytime soon i saw a really interesting story uh reporting that because of the terms of labor agreements and all that stuff in alberta jim um there's something about how they have uh in, in alberta you have to name an arbitrator uh before you can lock out uh anybody in a, in a union uh, sort of way and uh and since the nhl hasn't done that um, you know, we could have a two-team NHL uh, <laughs> coming up. I'm sure they're going to figure out a way around it, but a two-team NHL coming up. The nice thing about that, though, Jim, is that at least the Oilers have a 50-50 chance of getting in the playoffs. That's a very good point. <laughs> very good point. <laughs> but, nice uh, yeah, the Battle of Alberta for 82 games. I, <laughs> I like it. At least we get to see Yakubov play. And then play each other in the playoffs. That's right. Three months for four the rounds. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, speaking of NHL, word is that they might not own a team for much longer. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, they've, they've been really trying to get out of the team ownership game, <laughs> no, you know. So. They, they, they tried it, didn't really work out for them. But uh, there are reports that Greg Jamison finally has the $170 million to uh, buy the Phoenix Coyotes. Pa uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the partners there is Ice Edge Holdings. That was the, uh, the group that initially tried to buy the Coyotes when they were in court. Uh, and that's when the NHL ended up uh, buying them for themselves. Pro Hockey Talks has a biz uh, bit of a problem, though. The city of Glendale wants to tweak the 20-year, $324 million lease because uh, a five-year sales tax increase for the 125 of that, uh, 324, could be reversed by voters in a wow. couple months. So wow. that would uh, that would leave the city uh, in a pretty rough state. Yeah. So see, there's there's always controversy around this story, and even when the guys got the money, there's something else popping up. Boy, sure would do well in, you know, Hamilton. But <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, there's been some talk about a couple of players in the last couple of weeks. Uh, why were Shea Weber, Roberto Luongo, and Shane Doan in the news, Jim? Uh, reports say Doan has signed a four-year, $21.5 million uh, extension with the Coyotes, pending the sale yes. of the 12, of course. Uh, we also found out this week Shea Weber's big 14-year deal does not include a no-trade clause. So that's interesting because I don't know if you can move that contract anyways, but... Wow. He's, he's no longer in the driver's seat, you know, in terms of that. 
Uh, and Roberto Luongo was spotted in Florida doing a bit of practicing, a little working out. Uh, and someone caught up with him and he said that, you know, a return to the Panthers makes sense for him. And so uh, I, I guess that's where he's decided he wants to go. So uh, you, you can't see him back in Vancouver. I, I just, I'm sure like he could, he could stay there and continue to have moderate success and, you know, and all that. But I just don't see him fitting in there anymore now that they've sort of named Schneider as the starter. I uh, I don't think anybody was surprised that he... I mean, he lives in Florida in the offseason. Yeah. His wife lives there. His wife doesn't live in Vancouver during the season or anything like that. His wife and his kids. And, uh, I mean, I think everybody knows that Florida is where he wanted to go. That being said, you can't just... It's a 30-team 30, 30 league. You can't just be like... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going I wanna, here. I'm, so. I, I want to go to Florida, so that's the way it's got to be. So good luck trying to trade that for me. Hope, yeah. hope that goes well. <laughs> Should have signed a one-year contract every yeah, wow. time. Exactly. So. If, if that's how you're going to play, yeah, well, yeah. Okay, listen, I'm not playing for you anymore, but you need to send me to this specific team. <laughs> Don't care how you do it. No, yeah, exactly. It doesn't bother me either way. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't understand. I mean, good for Roberto Longo. Maybe maybe they'll bring him back and send him down. I don't know if he's got a no-movement clause. He probably does, but... He probably does, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, big story in the NFL this week, and one that we've kept a close eye on here on 15 Minutes of Fame, regarding the bounty program and the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, Jonathan Vilma, Will Smith, Scott Fujita, and Anthony Hargrove all had their suspensions overturned by a three-member appeals panel. Uh, the bats for the head coaches and the GM the full season. That sticks. But uh, this, uh, there, there could still be penalties for these four guys. Just the, uh, the, the panel decided those were too severe. A couple were you know, season-long uh, bans. So it's, uh, it's an interesting story. I, w- I wonder if, you know, if there was some, maybe some leaks in the in the airtight case they had against them or if you know or, or if this is the the arbitrators of the appeal panel saying you can't really punish the players as much for this because they were you know they were doing their job so I, I, it, that's a tough one a lot of these players said you know the nfl said that the nfl commissioner can't control their fate just like that you know you can't just yeah. say you're suspended and i wonder if this three-member appeals panel validated that, uh, Jim. I wonder if that's yeah. that's really taking away some of the power uh, but and showing that, yeah, you can't just you can't just suspend me and not show evidence and not all yeah. this other stuff. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, boy, I hope 10 years down the road, Jim, someone writes a book and we can get yeah. behind the scenes on this, you know what I mean? When, when it doesn't really matter to players who are playing now, I really want to know what's going on here, and I think it would be a, a great book and an even better movie. I feel it could star me as <laughs> any of those players. So, uh, Jonathan Vilma tweeted, Victory is mine, <laughs> Stewie Griffin. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. And still with the NFL, Jim, I'm thinking about putting a little money down. I mean, it's a little rad. You have a government like, job. Right, it's I got a good government can. job. Yeah. I got a little extra money uh, sitting around. If my boss is watching, honest to God, I don't have that much money. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, it's just a bit here. And uh, <laughs> I want to put a little money on the Baltimore Ravens to win the Super Bowl. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Well, I suppose it all depends how they do against the Eagles in Philadelphia's home opener because uh, the last three teams to beat Philly in Philly's home opener, Saints, Packers, Giants, yep. have gone on to win the Super Bowl. Well, how about that? So maybe after week two, which is, I believe, when they play, yeah. then think about the money thing. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, uh, I, I told you that uh, you know I don't really have a team in the NFL. Usually I wait about eight games in to really pick a, pick a team. I know I'm the bandwagon. Just I'm not an NFL fan, so you know, shoot me. But... Uh, uh, I was thinking this year, especially if there's no hockey, maybe picking a team. And yep. uh, you know what? Maybe the Ravens are my are my team. Maybe that's that's who I'll watch. Not bad. Not I've decided bad. on the San Francisco 49ers. That's so right. So that's that's my team. We might have some head to heads here. We might have cool. we might have some head to heads. Maybe we'll have to maybe we'll have to do a little 15 minutes of fame. Uh, uh, just watching it for the next yep. 16 weeks. Each. Each week you get a new piece of team merchandise, so by the end we'll be super fans. <laughs> That's right. That's how it works, right? That's, That's right. Those, those are the foam, rules. Foam finger. That's right. <laughs> well, we're going to move on to the Gabbies now. These are good and bad by you, folks. We take the best and the worst of the world of sport and usually make a little bit of fun of it. Uh, this one's not uh, that much of a joke, but a good this week to NHL Rookie of the Year, Gabriel Landeskog. 
who is the new captain of the Colorado Avalanche, making him the youngest captain in league history, taking over from 87 himself, Sidney Crosby. Um, uh, sorry, as the youngest uh, captain ever. He does take over from Milan Hayduk, who, interestingly, relinquished the role, not moved on, not, not retired, yeah. uh, relinquished the role. Um, and after we talk about this, I want to do a little bit on the Edmonton Oilers after this. So what do you think? Okay. I think it's interesting. I mean, it's it's funny when when something like this happens, you get all the all the uh, internet haters. Oh, sure. oh, he's too young. How could they call? How? None of us know. No, must, exactly. I, I would. I'm just assuming that if you know, if they name him captain, he's obviously a leader in the room. How much does this, the C mean really these days, though? You know. Oh, that's, that's valid. Like, I think it means different things to different people. When Steve Eiserman got the C uh, on your beloved Red Wings when yeah. um, he was like 15 years old, I mean, it was a big deal. And yeah. so uh, I think it's something else. And on the other side, the relinquishing part, I don't think anybody in the world is saying that either Taylor Hall or Jordan Eberle, and my, my pick is absolutely Taylor Hall, is going to be the captain of the Edmonton Oilers one day. Um, I wonder if it's not, you know, maybe follow Milan Hayduk's, Hayduk's role and maybe Horkoff could give up the seat there. See, I, I see you're smiling already because I, I, I'm just, you know, <laughs> hoping that could happen. But I know that's not realistic. And I like Horkoff. I'm a big Horkoff, Horkoff fan. Yeah, I think it's. I think there's, there's a valid uh, there's a valid argument there. I'd actually like to see Jordan Everly with the C. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that'll yeah. have to be an argument for another day. But I. I, I mean, I, they're, they're roommates. You know, they, they are could, roommates. They could rotate. That's right. That's right. Uh, here, here's a crazy one. Sure. Uh, Sarah Crilly had practiced with the Scottish national team, but was in the stands for a recent game against Norway, hanging out with her friends. Not even not in team gear, nothing. She's That's just right. there to watch. I think she had practiced with them that week, and they said, oh, come on, watch the game. Something happened. They needed her, so they pull her in. They, they, find, a, they find an outfit for her. An outfit. They outfit. find a jersey for her. They, they, uh, she had to wear uh, shoes that were two sizes too big. Wow. Scored the game-tying goal. Amazing. Not a bad little afternoon at the park, but can you imagine? You're, just, you're in the stands, and it's, Jeff, <laughs> yeah. Jeff, come on, man. Our goalie didn't show up. Well, that's exactly well, it. Every NHL game I go to, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got the pads in the car, fellas. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm ready to go. car's not that far. You know I'm here, right? <laughs> well, let's give a good to Man U. Sir Alex Ferguson says he would consider inviting Usain Bolt to play in a friendly next year against the Real Madrid legends. That would be fun to watch, especially if he got a breakaway. Ain't nobody catching yeah. him. Give him 100 meters. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's cool, though. He's, he's, he's talked about wanting to play. Maybe this will be his... His first little showcase. No, that'd be very we'll cool. We'll see a star in the making. Absolutely. Star in the making, like he's not already a star. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's start the, uh, the bads here with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They were in the punchline last week. That's so right. So they've kind of, they're mov moving the way up to good, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, they finished dead last in ESPN's ultimate standings, which ranks every pro team in uh, North America. Mm -hmm. well, stuff like bang for your buck, uh, title track. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and affordability. Which you hear that a lot about Toronto is a very affordable place to to go see a game. You <laughs> so know, they finished dead last. Dead last. Uh, professional sports teams. You know, Jim, how I love to see the Maple Leafs on the bad side of the Gabbies. Absolutely love them, and this is absolutely one of my favorites. And for every center of the universe fan, for every TSN Sportsnet show that is all about the Leafs, this is just this is great. You're the worst. You're <laughs> the worst, and it's not just me saying it because I'm a Westerner. Like, they're, they're saying it. I love it. It's great. ESPN <laughs> saying it. So good. Jeff going in on the Maple Leafs. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. How about a bad to Republican VP nominee Paul Ryan? We don't do a whole lot of politics on the show, but nope. here, here's a good one. He recently lied, Jim, about having run a bunch a of politician marathons. politician lying? Yeah, a politician lying. And the greatest thing is he said he did it in really good time, like amazing time, too. Yeah. As it turns out, because, you know, people keep stats and, you know, when you're running they for do. a political office, people can, you know, Google you. Um, he has run a grand total of one marathon and Sarah Palin had a better time than he did when she ran hers. Ouch. Seriously, ouch. All right. Absolutely. What are you doing? I, I mean, lying is lying's fine. Whatever. Yeah, sure. But, like, if I tell you that I drive a Lamborghini... <laughs> It's going to be pretty hard, pretty easy for I'm you to figure know. out that I don't. It'll be I'm, hard for me to keep that lie up. That's right. When you're it's rolling, in the shop, the Lamborghini yeah, shop. Right. not even lying there because it is in the shop. That's right. I don't own it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I, oh, yeah, I run marathons all the time. What's your, what's your best one? 
Oh, oh, right. oh I did way better than that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm always running. Always. I'm running for office right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, you, you don't run marathons. And we can check this stuff. We can check. Yeah. <laughs> 1994 or something like that. Oh, oh he runs marathons. That's crazy. <laughs> if only there was some place where all that information could be gathered and we could verify his times. That's right. Flash forward to now. <laughs> he only has one time. <laughs> but I just, I, it, 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 I love that people still will still make a claim like that. Oh yeah, totally. Just knowing that it could take, it probably take 10 minutes to debunk his his marathon story. Absolutely, I love it. Amazing. <laughs> Finally, a bad two errors in the MLB. Right. Sportsreference.com says the league is closing in on its 500,000th error, which could happen anytime in the coming weeks. The Pittsburgh Pirates did their part recently. I think they had like seven errors yeah. in a game. They, and they showed it with like the number coming up each time it happened. <laughs> oh, no. It's like real, real embarrassing stuff. Yeah. But they're, they're just trying to get us to 500,000. Yeah, and uh, I, I've always said the Pittsburgh Pirates, I mean, traditionally they've always given their best on that trying to yep. get up to that 500,000. They're a good team for that. I like it. How about the fact that we have a league that, honest to God, keeps the stats that well? Like, absolutely unbelievable. And keeps errors. Like, you mess oh, yeah. up. It's just you You have to know that you messed up. You probably hear it from your coach, and you get a one next to your name <laughs> in the right. E column. Oh, man. Brutal. Dude, if they counted errors in regular life. That, totally. Totally. If they found an errors in my work, oh my god! At, le at little... least I'd have a stat line. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, the punchline this week, Jim, involves a school district in Colorado. That's right, Jeff. Uh, this is some this is some amazing stuff yeah. right here. Kids in Weld County are not allowed to wear Peyton Manning jerseys for a totally awesome reason. Are you ready for this yeah, one? Okay, okay. According to the school board, yeah, the numbers 13, 14, 18, 31, 41, and 81. Are gang numbers, oh, they're obviously. Gang numbers. One more time: 13, 14, 18, 31, 41, 81. Right. Okay. Gang numbers. All right. Uh, so kids cannot wear those to school. We're talking about like grade two. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I mean, let that be a lesson, you kids. There are plenty of open numbers for your gang. Yeah. Don't don't pick the ones. Oh, this is a gang number. Oh, I think I'll just use that. Hey, man. No. Just you got to start your own. Nineteen. That's son. good. Kids, yeah. if you're listening out there, if you're going to start a gang, pick another number. I mean, yeah, go like ahead. If, if, I'm not going to tell you to not start a gang because you've probably made up your mind. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've lived already. so much. You have so much life experience. You've okay. made up your mind. That's it. That's it. But don't, you know, don't be one of these, oh, we're the 18s. 13, 14, 18, 31, 41, 81. Yeah. Oh, no. uh, none of them. That's, <laughs> you know, be, be your own gang. That's right. <laughs> I like it. That's what they're teaching in schools these days. And that's good. Individuality. I like so that. So Peyton Manning is walking around on the field in some gang attire. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's hilarious. Amazing. Well, folks, our 15 minutes of fame are up for this week. Join us again next week. We're going to get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, I'm rocking a 13. <laughs> I'm 41 to the death, son. <laughs> Have a good week.